Today's lesson is on chords and arcs. So let's start with a chord. What is a chord? It's a segment whose endpoints are on a circle. So let me scroll down here a little bit. A segment whose endpoints are on a circle is a chord. So let's just draw one here. A segment whose endpoints are on a circle. So if I labeled that A, B, that would be chord A, B. That's a segment. Okay? An angle whose vertex is the center of a circle is called a central angle. And all these things are going to be related to chords and arcs, these terms I'm going to give you. So let me show you what this looks like. Central angle. So it says the vertex is the center of the circle. So if I draw that angle right there and call it angle 1, that's a central angle because its vertex is the center of a circle. If I draw this angle right here, angle 2, that is a central angle. All right, let's see what we got next. A portion of the circumference of a circle is an arc of the circle. So let me just show you that over here. So if I got my circle here, and it says a portion of the circumference, so let's say from here to here, that's a portion of the circumference, right? That would be an arc. And the way we would, the symbology we would use to talk about arc AB would be like so. AB with a little arc over it. An arc whose endpoints are the endpoints of a diameter of the circle is called a semicircle. I know you've heard of a semicircle before. So for instance, if this is the center of the circle and I have an arc, an arc whose endpoints, so here's the diameter, let's say. We've got to put the diameter up here. And by the way, is the diameter a chord? Of course the diameter of a chord is a chord of a circle. It's just a chord that happens to contain the center. Okay, and this arc whose endpoints are the endpoints of the diameter is a semicircle. So the green arc right there is a semicircle and of course the other half of the circle would be a semicircle as well. And hopefully you remember that there is 180 degrees in the semicircle because the full circle has 360 degrees. All right, part of a circle that measures less than 180 degrees is known as a minor arc. Minor arc. So, for instance, that arc AB that we looked at up here, that would definitely be a minor arc because it measures less than 80 degrees. And we always name a minor arc with two letters. So, suppose I put C right here. Then BC would be another minor arc. How about AC? I think AC would also be a minor arc. That's less than 180 degrees. So AC or CA, doesn't matter whichever way you want to say it. All those are minor arcs. A minor arc is smaller than a semicircle and is named by two letters, just like I told you. The measure of a minor arc is equal to the measure of its central angle. So let's go back up here. Let's just look at AB since that's where we started. If I draw this angle AB, and let's say I told you that the measure of this angle is 89 degrees, then I would know that the measure of arc AB is also 89 degrees. The arc is always going to be, the minor arc is always going to be equal to the measure of its central angle. Let me draw a couple more up here. Another circle. Let's say I put A, B, C, D. Okay, so AB is a minor arc. ABC is a major arc, and what we're going to see, let, let's look down below here. Part of a circle that measures between 180 and 360 is a major arc. A major arc. A major arc is bigger than a semicircle, and we always name a major arc with three letters. I'm going to change this one just a little bit. 
I'm going to put C on down here. Okay, the measure of a major arc is the measure of the related minor arc subtracted from 360. So let me put the center of my circle here, and let's just make sure we know what we're talking about. So if I draw all these radii out here to the points that I have put on this circle, then what do I know? I know, let's do this. Mm, let me call this 45, and these are degrees. I can't really fit it in there. And let's say, I don't know, this, oh, this is a semicircle here, so this would have to be 135. And this is a little bit bigger than 180, so I'm just going to call that 60. We'll call that 60. And then I know this whole thing has to add up to 180, so let me just come over here. Hold on a second. Okay, there we go. So what I what I was having trouble remembering here, this is a this is a core, this is a diameter. So that means this part here is a semicircle. So the sum of those two central angles and the arcs has to be 180. And likewise for this part over here. So that's what we got. So we know let's do the measure of arc A B. We know it's the same as the measure of the central angle, so that's going to be 135 degrees. And let's do one of the major arcs. Let's do, how about this, the measure of arc ABC. That's the major one. And let me show you in purple here. It goes, here's, here's arc ABC. Hopefully you can see that in purple. And what's the measure of arc ABC going to be? Well, it's going to be 135 plus 60, which is going to be 195 degrees. All right, so major arcs, if you want the measure of them, you take 360 and then you subtract the measure of the minor arc. Major arcs will always be called with three letters. Minor arcs will be named by two letters. And a minor arc is always going to be in between 0 and 180 and a minor arc will always have the same measure as its central angle. All right, so now we got some theorems and converses. Let's see what 12.4 says. Within a circle or incongruent circles, which we learned about last time, congruent central angles have congruent arcs. That's what we just talked about. So if I see that angle AOB in our picture here is congruent to angle COD, then I know that arc AB is going to be congruent to arc CD. And then, of course, the converse of this would be true as well. Within a circle or congruent circles, congruent arcs have congruent central angles. In a minute, we're going to do a few practice problems so we can apply these theorems. The next one says, within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent central angles have congruent chords. So let's say angle AOB in this picture is congruent to angle COD. Then not only do I know the associated arcs are congruent, but I also know that these chords are congruent as well. And the converse of that would be true too. Within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent chords have congruent central angles. 12-6 says within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent chords have congruent arcs. So if chord AB is congruent to chord CD, then I know that the measure of arc AB or arc AB is going to be congruent to arc CD. And of course, that means they would have the same measure as well. All right, and the converse would be true within a circle or in congruent circles. Congruent arcs have congruent chords. So if I, grew, if I drew chord AD and chord BC, and uh, if arc AD is congruent to arc BC, which I don't think it is, but anyway, if it were, then the chords would be congruent as well. Congruent chords have congruent arcs, and congruent arcs have congruent chords. All right, 12-7 says within a circle or in congruent circles, 
towards equidistant from the center are congruent. And remember, when we talk about distance from a point or from the sides of an angle, we're talking about perpendicular distance. So let me draw this one a little bit larger over here. Got a circle, got a chord, got a chord, got the center. So if I'm talking about these chords being equidistant, I have to drop a perpendicular. Perpendicular, and those, if those are congruent, then that means those two chords are equidistant. All right, so the two chords are equidistant, and if they are, then that means those chords are congruent. All right, and the converse, within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent chords are equidistant from the center or centers. So let's see what kind of problems we have to help us get this to stick. Here we go. What is the length of RS in circle O? Here's RS. And what do we know about RS? Oh, we know that RS is congruent to RP. And you may be saying, well, how do we know that? How do we know that? Oh, I know that because they're both equidistant from the center. How do I know they're both equidistant? Because when I drop a perpendicular from the chord to the center or the center to the chord, they're the same length. They're congruent, which means those two chords are congruent. Therefore, let's see, PR is, well, sorry, the length of PR is 12.5 plus 12.5, which is 25, which is also going to be the length of RS because of the theorem we just learned. What is the value of X here? Okay, what do we know? Well, we know we have congruent chords. Right? We have congruent chords, therefore by the converse of that theorem, we know that those chords are equidistant from the center of the circle, right? And if this distance is 16, then I know x has to be 16 as well. Okay, a few more theorems. I sure hope you're making your flashcards and studying them. In a circle, if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and its arc. In a circle, if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and its arc. So that would mean that this arc is congruent to this arc as well. If a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects that chord and its arc as well. Next theorem says, in a circle, if a diameter bisects a chord, that is not the diameter. So a diameter could bisect a diameter, right? But we're saying that's not the case here. If a diameter bisects a chord, that is not the diameter. So let's just draw that. Here's a diameter. If a diameter bisects a chord that is not another diameter, then it's perpendicular to the chord. So if I know that that chord is bisected, then I know that diameter is perpendicular to the chord. All right, 1210 says, in a circle, the perpendicular bisector of a chord, so let's just draw that before we go too much further. So let's just put a chord up here. Let's draw the perpendicular bisector of that chord. Well, I missed. Let me do that again. Chord. Perpendicular bisector of chord. Okay. The perpendicular bisector of a chord contains the center of the circle. So it'll be the diameter, right? It'll be a diameter. In a circle, the perpendicular bisector of a chord, 
So if I have this marked this way, then I know that bisector is a diameter of the circle. It contains the center of the circle. Okay, got a few more problems here so we can try all these new theorems out. So let's see what we got. Find the measure of each arc. Well, there are a whole lot of arcs here, right? We got arc GH. Let's just take a few. The measure of arc GH is the same as its central angle, so that'd be 120 degrees. The measure of arc, let's see, let's do HD. What's the measure of arc HD? How am I going to figure that out? Well, I got 120 plus 70 plus 80. So that's 150 plus 120, which is 270. And then all the way around the circle is 360. So 360 minus 270 is going to be 90 degrees, right? 90 degrees, which means this central angle here is a right angle, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so let's do a major arc. Let's pick... Mm, Let's pick GDH, the measure of arc GDH. That's a major arc there, right, because it's larger than 180. So GDH, that's going to be 70 plus 80 plus 90, right, which is 150 plus 90, so that would be 240. And, of course, I know that's right because 360 minus 240 would give me what's left, which is 120. So there are a lot more arcs there in that circle, but we're not going to do arcs on that circle all day. Let's do the next one. Find the measure of arc KM. Okay, measure of arc KM. Let's see what we know. Well, we know that... This chord, Kn, is bisected. How do we know that? Oh, because we got a diameter. We got the diameter intersecting that chord. It's perpendicular to it. Therefore, we know that it bisects the chord, and it bisects the arc as well. All right? So, therefore, we know that... Let me erase this. I can't tell. Okay, so there's the measure of those arcs, which we just decided are bisected. So we know that Km, arc Km, is congruent to, which, so the measure would be equal to the measure of Nm, which tells me that 5x equals 7x minus 16. Therefore, x is going to be 8, right? x is going to be 8 which tells me that the measure of arc Km is going to be 40 degrees. 40 degrees. All right. Why don't you pause here and you do these next, what have we got, three. You do these next three problems. Come back and check them. All right. If we start here, find QS if MN is 16, RT is 16. Ooh, what is this telling me? MN and RT are both chords of the circle. So I've got congruent chords, therefore I know they're equidistant from the center of the circle. So what does that tell me? That tells me that PQ is congruent to QS. So I'm trying to find QS, so it might be that I need to find PQ, and it looks like I do because I've got NQ labeled. So what I did is I broke this little triangle out of this circle so we could take a closer look at it this little triangle right here and so if MN is 16 and I know that this this diameter would bisect that so that would make PN 8 all right they gave me this NQ is 10 I gotta find PQ well hey it's a Pythagorean triple so I know that this equals it'd be a 3 4 5 so 3 times 2 is 6 so PQ is 6 therefore QS would also be 6. Okay, find the measure of arc RS. So that's this little arc right here. Okay, what do we know? We know that we've got a diameter that's a perpendicular, that's perpendicular to a chord. Therefore, we know it bisects the chord and it bisects the arc. So I just set this equation up that 3x plus 24 is 7x. 
I find that x equals 6. I plug that into the little, um, I plug in x equals 6, and I get the measure of arc RS is 42 degrees. And of course, that would be the same as the measure of arc VR. What if I asked you, what's the measure of arc VTS? What's the measure of arc VTS? You tell me. Write it over here. Write it over here so I can see it when you come back next time. Okay, and finally, find HK. So this little piece right here, I'm trying to find HK if DG and JL are both 24. So once again, I got congruent chords, which tells me that, I don't know, it tells me all kinds of things, but let's see what I need to get from that. DG and G, JL are 24, DH is 13, so I took out this little triangle right here so we could see it better. I put it right here. Okay, so what we've got here is part of a diameter, part of a diameter that's perpendicular to that chord, so I know that it would bisect that chord. So if DG is 24, that means DF is 12, and they told me that DH is 13, and I'm trying to find HK. Well, I know that HK, I know that HK equals FH. Why? Because I have congruent chords, so I know they're equidistant from the center. And once again, I got a triple here. 5, 12, 13, so I know that FH is 5, which means HK also equals 5. All right, and that's about it. I gave you a little challenge here. On a separate sheet of paper, use theorem 12-5 to construct a regular octagon in this circle. What does theorem 12-5 say? It says, within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent central angles have congruent chords. So that's your challenge. What you need to start with is a circle, and you need to know where the center of the circle is. And I'm going to let you take it from there. That's a super-duper challenge problem. See what you can do with that, and I'll see you next time.